Welcome back to Streaming Media East 2023 here in Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm here today with Patrick Courtney, who is with a company called Fuse Media. Patrick, uh, what's your title and your role in the company? Uh, my title is uh, SVP of Digital Strategy and Operations, which uh, basically our, our core business being pay TV cable, I'm responsible for most everything that's just not that not, not that okay. business. Okay, so okay. our our fast channels, our subscription streaming, our YouTube channel, our digital social, that's all under our you know my 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 purview. And Fuse Media is a, a multi-platform entertainment company. We reach a, a youth audience. Um, we're minority owned, and our our. Our products, Fuse, we have two cable linear channels, we have five fast channels, we have subscription service, all tailored to, towards uh, a, uh, a multicultural audience and mm. specifically within fast reaching underrepresented demographics within that space. Okay, okay, nice. So you said five channels, you started in 2018. Did you start all five at that same time? We started with one. Okay. And we, we were kind of just sort of dipping our toe in the water because we you know, were hearing about this free TV. And so we started, we, we launched our first channel, which was kind of a, you know, call it a kitchen sink channel. It was just sure. whatever we had lying around. Let's throw it in there and see right. what's going on. And then as we started to see the revenue start to materialize there, we started to invest and we've kind of been following the revenue in okay. that. And we've realized that there's opportunities to create distinct products within Fast, a little bit because of the nature of, be, of, of uh, viewing behaviors in Fast and mm -hmm. how niche and targeted those things are to create verticalized brands within within fast that are not our pay TV, like that are separate from the Fuse flagship okay. pay TV linear pay, brand. Pay TV. Yeah. So we'll talk about revenues in a second, but let me come back real quick on your channel. So you mentioned sort of the kitchen sink channel, anything that's lying around is primarily what you're doing, putting um, pre-recorded content on in a playlist that plays out as live linear, or are you doing actual live events in the middle of those fast channels as well? Uh, we're, we're not currently doing live, although we are going to be doing a, a live to tape uh, event um, airing for uh, a Juneteenth uh, okay. event sure. that's going to be uh, featured on our Shades of Black channel. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the, kind of the first time where we're programming something you know, within a, a day of mm -hmm. this thing airing and it's being kind of an eventized sort of thing but uh, yeah it's it's kind of it's a combination of library fuse content and windowing that um, as well as uh, our distributor partners and studio relationships to okay. program these channels like shades of black which is of our you know our our flagship uh, black streaming service which okay. did you know a billion minutes last year so uh, do you also because you've got the the pay TV side and you've got the fast side is there content that airs first on the Fuse pay TV side that eventually moves over onto your fast channels? Um, so yeah, we are doing a little bit of that when it makes sense because you know describing our the Fuse parent brand um, is different than say you know Shades of Black, Latino sure. Vibes, Out TV okay. Proud, um, Backstage. So when it when it when that content fits any one of those other brands there's typically a windowing period. I mean, it's an extensive windowing period because, right, right, um, right. you know, talking about the economics yeah, just, yeah, just before absolutely. this, uh, you know, we making sure that, that the, our, most, our most premium content is in our most premium mm -hmm. environments. Okay, nice. So talking about revenues, um, one of the things that you've seen, I'm sure, is just the sheer explosion of fast channels. And I think we were talking before, it's like 1,700 channels that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, how do people find that content? Because you know, we thought an EPG was impractical at 125 channels in the cable world. Now you've got all these things. Um, it, it seems to me there's an opportunity from an aggregation standpoint to say, you know, you want to watch something that's um, African diaspora. You want to watch something that's Latina, Latino. Here would be a place to go find all those things. Um, you you curate specifically to those markets, but but just as a as a whole, are people lost in the sea of having too many options or, or too many unknown places to go find things that they'd like to to see? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think. You're, you're right. We're talking about how 150, 200 channels was too many, and there's 1,700. There's probably I don't know that there's a fast platform that has all 1,700 mm -hmm. fast channels on it. Um, maybe there is. I haven't seen it. <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, but I, I think there's there's some technology 
product-based things that are going on that, you, you can, that you're seeing in Fast, like there's a little bit of personalization starting to kind of okay. emerge. There's things like favoriting. There's those types of tools. From our standpoint, what we're trying to do is to build lasting brands in that space. So okay. it's something where you want to come back because you know what kind of programming you're going to get. And that's, I think, has been promoted in Fast also. Is, and that's why I think single series channels also do very well, because mm -hmm. you know exactly where to go to get this thing that you want to watch. Right. Um, and there's, there's only so many properties that are going to you know, emerge as winners in that, in, in that world. And that's what, why that's where we're focused on. We've always treated, um, you know, since we started launching Channels and Fast, uh, how are we building strong brands in there, both from a, a marketing and merchandising standpoint, but also the curation of the, the content, where we're sourcing the content, doing sure. studio uh, licensing deals with companies like Lionsgate to make sure that we're programming it with premium content. So it looks like, mm. okay. it feels like TV. Okay. Yeah. And then what about the all the different platforms you have to go to? You know, one of the data points we showed yesterday in the state of streaming survey was last year when we asked people to tell us, do you what do you deliver percentage-wise to mains power versus battery power? It was about 45% battery power. This year it's creeped up to about 47%. So clearly, as a whole, the industry is sort of stuck in the middle, but you're talking about demographics that may be more mobile, they tend to consume on battery-powered devices. Do you, do you find it a challenge to keep the, the brand excellence consistent across connected TVs and mobile devices and browsers and the like? Um, well, I mean, we see, are you talking about like fast specifically? Fast specifically. Yeah. Um, I mean, overwhelmingly our, our viewership is in, is in the connected TV okay. environment. So we don't, um, yeah, I would say that, that the alternative devices, battery-powered devices, just hasn't really been a significant hmm. enough okay. amount of the viewership. Okay. Um, and, and again, I, I think that's in part because of how, how we're pro programming it, right? Like, a, you know, the feature-length, hour-and-a-half film that is, you know, airing um, on Shades of Black, for example, that just sort of wants to be seen on a <laughs> okay, on right. a, on a, on a, a television lean, lean screen. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're all long form programming. Like I said, okay. it feels like TV and so we, we see the, the the response to that is overwhelming majority of our viewership is Do you also TV. have a VOD library that people can access as well? Yeah, a, um, a little a little bit. Uh, we uh, you know, when, when we when we're able to get VOD rights, a lot of the stuff that we we program are, are is acquired programming. Uh, that was something that was we were just talking about on the, the panel is that there is a distinction between fast linear and and right. VOD and ABOD right, right, rights, right, right. and you don't the content always doesn't come with both of those. Sure. So when we when when we, when we are able to get it, we'll get it, and we make sure that that experience feels you know uh, connected okay. as much as it can as it can. But it's dependent. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And then besides that topic in the panel, what other sort of big topic bubbled up to the surface around it? Um, we, you know, we talked a lot about the user experience and the user experience uh, spanning fast but into these other different environments mm -hmm. like you know pay TV or VMVPDs, sure. subscription streaming, you know app, apps and direct to consumer versus platform based you know re reseller marketplace mm -hmm. types of environments, channels environments. How does that all start to become unified? It's more of a product and technology okay. problem, sure. but it's it is something that I think you know is. The, the, the viewer, the consumer, ultimately is suffering because they don't know where to watch right. things, right? right. And they, or they've got Which to go to a dozen different apps and platforms. EPG, you know, sort of EPG in the sky um, problem that we have is there's so much content to watch, but you don't know where you can actually watch it. And it's not even, can I watch it here? It's, can I watch it here this month for these two weeks because somebody else is going to pick up the license later? Yeah, well, so. yeah, exactly. But well, what you thought, you know, you were preparing to watch right. this movie on Netflix and, yeah. and then suddenly it's gone and it's not, you know, it's someplace else or now you have to pay for it to watch it. I have it that something case else. on Amazon <laughs> Prime where it, you know, it tells me to continue watching. And of the seven things to continue watching, two of them now tell me I have to rent or buy them. <laughs> yeah. Because the window went away. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not going to finish that movie. Yeah. So, all right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge for sure. All right. Patrick, thank you very much for your time. Thank and, you. Uh, we will be right back with our next guest.